us how to blow his cold ghost basket. G'day cheeky dogs, today we're going to talk about the new Bluey episode Ghost Basket and all of the pop culture references, easter eggs and the hidden details that maybe you might have missed in this episode. Which is also the fifth granny episode that we have gotten from Bluey and yes of course it came with a stunner of an ending with an epic reveal of the for sale sign and setting up this whole premise for the 28 minute special The Sign that's coming out next weekend. So if you love Bluey as much as we do here, don't forget to hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I put out any other Bluey videos. But let's get straight into it with the epic homage to Scooby-Doo that this episode was. <laughs> Now there are like a lot of little Scooby-Doo references kind of like filtered throughout the episode. The most obvious one though, of course, was the hallway scene gag. Now this is traditionally known as the, the Frelin or Freling door gag. It started in France ages ago, but it became really popular because of Scooby-Doo. They used it all the time in their animation. And I love so much that this scene that Bluey did, not only did they pay like homage to that, but they chopped and changed the scenes and made like the camera go a bit wonky in it to kind of replicate what it would look like if you did this in real life, where you would have to, of course, like stop and start for them to like switch the rooms and everything like that. So it was just like a perfect gag all wrapped in together. Now, of course, the other little Scooby-Doo homages was the fact that, like, the ghost basket reveal was very similar to how they would, like, reveal all the villains in Scooby-Doo, where, like, you meet the villains throughout the episode, and then at the end, they do, like, the mask off reveal, or in this case, the basket off reveal. <laughs> Here's your ghost basket. Oh, hello, love. Well, well, if it isn't our old friend Bluestone the Great. They even say things like, oh, it was this person all along. And Bandit even says that line in this episode. And it was you all along. Oh, wait, how could you? The other really big pop culture reference, of course, was Doctor Who. And if you were a fan of Doctor Who, then you would have gotten this straight away. It's bigger on the inside. Is it? I noticed. But right at the very start, when Chili and Bandit are talking about the house and they say this. It's a bit small. It's bigger inside. It is such an iconic reference to the Doctor Who joke that has been going on for 50 years now about the TARDIS and the fact that it is bigger on the inside. I like the bit when someone says it's bigger on the inside. It's a bit small. It's bigger inside. It's smaller on the outside. Okay. That is a first. This joke also comes into play a bit like throughout Bluey in general and the fact that the Healer house is constantly changing, has more rooms than what we know about it. So everyone's always like had this bit of a gag in their heads with Doctor Who. But something really cool that you might not have noticed is the for sale sign at the very end doesn't actually show how many bedrooms or bathrooms are in the Bluey house. So again, just another little joke and nod to the fact that there are endless bedrooms and bathrooms inside this house. And as for that whole for sale sign, I did already do a video specially dedicated to that. I'll leave a link for it down below as well as up here talking about what I think is going on with this for sale sign and how it will tie into future episodes. I'll have a little chat about it though as well at the very end of this video. Now, as for our ongoing traditional Easter eggs, we did see some tennis balls and some long dogs in this episode as well. We saw four tennis balls, two in the hallway, one on the picture, and one underneath the sofa in the sunroom. The sunroom is also where we saw a long dog that has occurred before. It's the green long dog on the sofa couch. And we did also see the long dog magnet that is on the fridge. Speaking of the fridge though, there were two other little hidden details on it. One of which is the postcard from India. It looks like the Taj Mahal. And then there's also a magnet of an elephant with like a blanket over it. Again, a very iconic souvenir from India, which of course leads to the question of who's in India? Like who is sending them the postcards and the magnets? And I do think that this could maybe tie in with the Grandpa Bob storyline of like, where has he been? Because we do know that he is coming back in the episode, The Sign. He is alive and well and flossing with Nana on the dance floor. So maybe this will tie into his storyline. Now, as for all the other amazing little hidden details, Details that maybe you might have missed. One of my favorite ones that I noticed for the first time was the babushka dolls that are in the sunroom. When you look up on the shelf, you can see the red healer ones more than anything else, but it does look like it's those like pull apart ones that you can put them in. And from memory, I think you can also buy those in Australia. We do also see the sticky gecko reappearing in like the hallway in the montage scene. My favorite little detail though is Pat and Janelle's jerseys from the episode, The Decider. So at the very end when Chili is running away, if you like zoom in onto their clothesline, you can see the maroon and the blue jersey. We do also have a very good fourth wall break from Bandit just before he's throwing the grannies out. He looks directly at the camera. Just get those grannies out and we've got a deal. 
And Bandit also has a few other little jokes in here, like when he calls the grannies old fossils, which is of course like a bit of an archaeology joke because he's an archaeologist. But also throughout the episode, he has like really like haggard like lines in his eyes, and I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Don't look at me in the eye! Ah, biscuits! Some other little like Aussie kind of Easter eggs is the biscuits that he throws at the grannies. If you look at them, it looks a lot like the Arnott's label for like the shortbread biscuits, which are very popular in Australia. They do of course mention lawn bowls, which is like a classic pastime of grannies in Australia and of course the surf life-saving Australia shout out you won it in a raffle at the surf club last April did we so in Australia, getting like winning a house from a surf life saving like competition is like this iconic Australian joke almost like everyone would have been to one of these raffles before in their life. But I do love that they managed to like pull this into the gag with the grannies. Now I do want to talk about the music as well as a little bit more about that sign before I get into my overall review because the music of course was iconic and definitely something different in this episode. So of course we have the grannies music throughout it. We have the little tiny snippet of it before like Bandit opens and shuts the door. Is anyone living here at the moment? Yes, but they're not. We then have it turning into the silly kazoo music for when they do the hallway scene. But then the ending, this is the first time ever that there is like no music and no animation in the end credits. It literally just finishes on like one note and then just goes silent. So very ominous because of course it is ominous seeing that for sale sign at the very end of the episode and not knowing what's about to happen. Now, as I mentioned, I have already done a whole video about the for sale sign and what I believe if it's going to happen or if it's not. And again, like I said, I'll leave it linked up here down below wherever, but like I said in that video, I do think it is a misdirect. I think it is going to be all resolved in the next episode, The Sign, which is coming out next Sunday, April 14th. We've seen clips of it like in their actual trailers and Disney Junior France even showed a few extra clips that they were not supposed to because BBC took their trailer down. But I do think from what I've seen of those that this will be resolved in The Sign. Overall though, this episode, at first I would have given it maybe like 3.5 out of 5 long dogs because it's a fun grannies episode, but not much else. And until of course the end scene, which I feel like bumps it up to four out of five for me. I do think it has some really beautiful lines, like I can't do this every time. No worries. <laughs> but look, I can't do this every time. I thought at first, like, you know, it relates to him explaining to the girls that like they can't keep playing this game to help them work through the house being sold. But I also wondered if it's like a line from Joe Brum himself about how he can't just keep making amazing Bluey episodes each time or amazing season. He's probably getting burnout as well. And there is a very high expectation of him now. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was also like kind of a hidden meaning layer to it. I do love also, of course, the like conflict between like grandparents and their children with selling houses. I thought that was a very nice representation of that. But overall, my two favorite moments was definitely the angry chili moment. Get those grannies off my lawn! As well as Bluey saying, oh, my bottom. <laughs> but cheeky dogs, so far that is all the Easter eggs that I have found in this episode. Let me know down below how many long dogs would you give this episode? What was your favorite moment from it? And if there was anything else that you saw that maybe I might've missed. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell for notifications so you know whenever I release any more Bluey videos. But until then, and until the sign comes out next Sunday, I have picked you cheeky dogs out a few other videos that maybe you would like to watch. And I will see you all in another video. Mwah, bye. Also, apologies if my voice is like a bit low or sounds a bit different in this. My kids are asleep and it's like almost midnight while I'm trying to make this video. <laughs>